Hey guys, welcome to part 6 of my 3D integration tutorial mini series where I have shown you how to create awesome visual effects like flying 3D bullets, UFOs or dissolving people into crows. In the last part of this series we finished off our effect by compositing the rendered 3D elements back onto our original footage inside of Adobe After Effects. If it makes you cry a little bit on the inside that you missed out, to cheer you up I've put this link up which will take you straight to it. Now, what's there left to talk about? Well, we could discuss the amazingly complex and incredibly boring theory of Nah, we will be doing that. Instead, let me show you how to use one of my favorite plugins for Adobe After Effects, Element 3D from Video Copilot. Element 3D allows you to add 3D objects into your scene directly inside of Adobe After Effects. That means you can create great looking 3D integration effects without ever having to export your data into an external 3D program, rendering all the elements and bringing everything back into After Effects. Element 3D also recently received a massive upgrade to version 1.5, thank you Andrew, and finally supports animated objects via OBJ sequences. The Element 3D plugin costs 150 US dollars off the Video Copilot Net website, but if you can wait till they have one of their frequent sales on, you can probably pick it up for around 100. Now, Element 3D is not as powerful as a fully fledged 3D program, but in many situations it provides all the tools you need to create your 3D integration effect directly inside of Adobe After Effects. But why just stand here and talk if I can show you and talk? Now let's get straight to it. If you watched this entire tutorial series, this footage should seem familiar. It is the scene we filmed in part 2 and it is a simple locked off shot of me pretending to interact with a floating object. Rather than creating the floating object in an external 3D program and bringing the render layers back into After Effects for compositing, we will use the Element 3D plugin from Video Copilot to create the virtual object right here in After Effects. For this, create a new solid. I will call mine Element. The color is irrelevant, just hit OK. Next, assign the element effect to the layer. If you install the Element 3D plugin, you should find the effect in the Video Copilot folder in your Effects and Presets panel. Element 3D is actually a particle replicator. What this means is that you typically use it to set up a number of 3D particles and replicate them to spread them out in 3D space in any configuration you like. You could distribute them in a grid pattern, a circle or on the vertices of a custom mesh. You can then animate the particle properties or move your camera around the 3D scene. Why is Element 3D not a particle system? Because it does not emit particles. You set up your particles and their position in 3D space at the start. You may notice that Element 3D has a number of groups. Each of these groups can be used for a different set of 3D particles. We will however only use one group and only create a single particle to represent our floating object. To set up your particles, click on the Scene Setup button. The main interface for Element 3D will open. This is where you configure the 3D particles for the effect. You can load your 3D models, assign materials to them and control which of the groups the particles belong to. While you can import any 3D object you like, I'm going to use a pre-made primitive shape for the floating object. On the right hand side of the interface is the model browser, which contains a list of pre-made 3D objects that come with Element 3D. Click on the primitive folder and select the particle object you want to use. I'm going to pick this unidentifiable blob. The 3D object has been added as a particle to group 1, as indicated by the blue checkbox on the group in the scene list. The preview window will now show what your particle looks like and you can drag your mouse around in the window to rotate it. Now this looks pretty plain, so let's give our blob some character by adding a material. At the bottom of the interface you will find the material and bevel browser which contains a list of shaders available to you. Click on the presets tab. I have bought the Pro Shaders pack which contains a large number of great materials but for this tutorial let's go with the basic shader that you should have available to you no matter whether you bought it or not. We want our blob to be highly reflective so double click on the Chrome material to assign it to the particle. That looks pretty cool already. You can see that the blob is reflecting an image of uh, I'm not quite sure what. This image is the default environment map used by Element 3D. Let's change it over to use our own environment map. Remember the sphere map we took on set when we shot the scene? Let's use that sphere map so it looks like the blob is reflecting that very scene. Click on the environment button at the top of the preview window. Element 3D comes with a number of preset sphere maps that you can use to set up some cool reflection effects but since we want this blob to sit as realistically as possible in our scene, let's select the sphere map we took on set. 
Now that looks pretty cool. One thing to note is that usually when you add 3D objects into your scene, you'd want to set up the lights to imitate the lights you had in your real life scene. Element 3D allows you to quickly switch between a few different lighting setups to see the effect on your object. As you may notice, light won't make much of a difference to this material block because it's highly reflective. We won't really worry about lighting for this effect, just keep in mind that you will usually have to set up the lights properly to make the 3D integration effect look realistic. We're done setting up our 3D particle for element 3D. Close the window by clicking OK at the top right corner of the window. Voila, the blob should now appear in the middle of our scene and because we're using the sphere map we recorded on set for the environmental reflection map, the blob should sit pretty realistically in the shot. Next we need to add a camera into the scene. Right click into your layers window and create a new camera. Let's call it camera and make sure the focal length matches the focal length you used to film this shot. If you don't set this up properly, things will get out of alignment and break the illusion pretty quickly. Now use the camera tool. You can press C on your keyboard to cycle through the modes for this and position the camera at approximately the same location as your real camera was in relation to the floating blob. I'm just going to dolly backwards a little bit and move the camera down a tad. This looks pretty good. Assume for just a moment that we added an object that is not reflective. We would now have to set up some lights to match the lighting in our scene. Element 3D works with the normal lights in After Effects, so we would have to create a new light to simulate the sun. We'd set the color to a yellowish tint and increase the intensity to match the sun. We would then position the light in the scene as required. But as you can see, and as I already mentioned, the light hardly makes a difference because of the reflectiveness of the blob. But I think you get the idea. Just remember to set up your lights properly, otherwise any virtual elements you add to the scene will not fit in. I'm going to delete the light again as we don't really need it for this particular effect. We now want to animate the blob to match my movements in the scene. In addition to moving left and right through the scene, I also want to give it some more life by having it bob up and down and spin slightly. Go to the element 3D effect and open up group 1. Each group exposes settings for the particle replicator and for the look of the individual particles. Expand the particle replicator tab for now. Note that the particle count is set to 1 because we only want to add a single blob to the scene. The replicator has a property called scatter XYZ that is used to randomly offset the particles in X, Y and Z direction. We want to animate the Y coordinate to have the blob move up and down constantly but rather than hand animating it all, let's use a small expression. Alt click on the stopwatch for the scatter Y property and in the text editor that appears type math.sin open round bracket time star 3 close round bracket star 30. This expression uses basic trigonometry, yes I know it's very scary, to cause the property value to oscillate between 30 and minus 30 in a sine wave pattern. I am multiplying the time parameter by 3 to increase the speed of the sine wave. If we now play back the animation you can see what that looks like. The blob is bobbing up and down all by itself. Let's also give the blob a little bit of spin. Close the particle replicator tab and open up the particle look settings. Expand the rotation options. The X, Y and Z properties control the amount of rotation of the particle. Let's animate the X and Y rotation with expressions. Alt click on the stopwatch for the X rotation. Enter time star 70 in the expression editor. Also add an expression to the Y rotation property and enter something like time star 100. I want the X and Y rotation to not be uniform so it looks a little bit more organic. That's pretty cool for our alien blob. Now it's time to animate our blob from side to side. Return to the particle replicator options and move back to the start of your composition. Keyframe the position X, Y and the position Z properties and move the blob off the screen by increasing the X coordinate of the replicator. Now it's really just up to animating the X, Y and Z coordinates of the replicator to match your scene. I'm going to animate the blob to approach me but evade me and zip around me every time I try to touch it. Finally, it'll fly off to the right of the screen as I chase after it. One last thing I like to do to make the movement a little bit more organic is to select all the XY keyframes and hit F9 on the keyboard to turn the interpolation mode to Bezier. This will cause the blob to accelerate and decelerate between the keyframes so it doesn't look quite as robotic. To make the effect even more interesting, let's add a little glow to the blob every time it gets scared and avoids being touched. For this, simply apply the glow effect from the effects and presets panel to the element layer. Lower the glow threshold a little bit, set the glow radius and glow intensity to zero and enable keyframes for the radius and intensity properties. Reveal the new keyframe properties on the element layer by pressing U on your keyboard and then just scroll through the list. 
Now go to the time position where I almost touch the blob and animate the glow radius and glow intensity to increase suddenly and then decrease as the blob makes a run for it. It's kind of a cute effect. Gives the blob a whole lot more character. Copy the keyframes to the second time I try to touch the blob. Since the blob is moving fairly fast at times, we also want to enable motion blur for the element 3D layer. Reveal the layer properties by pressing F4. Alternatively, you can also click the little toggle switches and modes button at the very bottom of the screen. Tick the motion blur option on the element layer and ensure your composition is also set to enable motion blur by enabling this switch. The blob should now have a nice realistic motion blur as it zooms around. Finally, let's create a simple fake shadow for the blob. For this, duplicate the element layer and call the copy shadow. Remove the glow effect from the shadow and add a hue saturation effect to it. Reduce the saturation and the lightness to zero to turn the layer fully black. Now apply a fast blur effect to the layer and increase the blurriness to around 40 to soften the shadow. Now comes the trick. Zoom out and enable the 3D switch on the shadow layer. You can ignore the warning you see. We love living on the edge anyways. Scale up the shadow layer and then rotate it so the back of the layer faces the camera. Position the layer back forward on the ground of the scene. Scale the layer up so the shadow seems to be about the right size. Since all of the shadows are falling away to the left side of the scene due to the position of the sun, let's distort this layer a little to match the direction of shadows. For this, apply the corner pin effect to the shadow layer. Pull the front two corners towards the left to skew the layer and distort the shadow so it sits realistically in the scene. If necessary, adjust the shadow layer position so the shadow seems to be positioned at the right spot. Finally, reduce the opacity of the shadow layer to around 50. And with that, we're done. Play back your final floating block 3D integration effect. Well, and that concludes my 3D integration tutorial mini-series. I hope you enjoyed the ride and learned something along the way. If you want to see more, if something still baffles you, if you have burning questions that you feel were left unanswered, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So, as always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. If you want to show some support, please subscribe, like or share. It really helps out a lot with the channel and if you're hungry for more, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.